Mina sama konnichiwa. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to CDTI online seminar about space technologies view and dialogue. The purpose of this online seminar is to show you the Spain's research and technology development capability and the new space age in which currently we find ourselves. Today, three Spanish companies from the industrial sector will present to you their challenges in the field of satellite manufacturing, space level surveillance, and reusable space rockets. From the research sector, the Spain Astrobiology Center joined us. We have also a special guest speaker from Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. My name is Danbara. I'm the chief representative of CDTI in Japan, and I'm the moderator of this seminar. To start the session, Mr. Jorge Toledo, the ambassador of Spain in Japan, will give us the opening remarks. Mr. Ambassador, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Danbara-san. Arigato gozaimashita. Uh, I'm joining you from uh, Tokyo, my residence, because I'm still uh, in the 14 days quarantine period. Minasama konnichiwa. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure to offer you a few words on the occasion of this online seminar about the Spanish space technology view and dialogue organized by CDTI. Spain is nowadays an essential, sorry, space is nowadays an essential pillar of the global economy. We are witnessing that the space industry is changing dramatically. Major technological shifts such, such as digitalization, miniaturization, artificial intelligence, or reusable launcher technology are disrupting traditional business models in space, reducing the costs of accessing and using space. Thus, space activities are becoming increasingly commercial with greater private sector involvement. More and more actors and interlocutors, both public and private, participate in the development of new space activities. These new entrants increase the level of competition, bringing in new ambitions. Currently, Spain ranks in the top five European countries in terms of public investment in the civil space sector through national and European programs. Our industry size has nearly doubled in the last 15 years. Our capabilities range from satellite design and manufacturing and space launch, and space launch systems development to a wide range of space technology-based services. In 2019, we held the first National Space Congress, a reflection of the significant growth that the sector is experiencing and the importance given to it in Spain. The Spanish space sector exports more than 80% of its products and services and dedicates 11% of its turnover to research and development, which shows its strengths and maturity of its space industry. CDTI, the organizers, the organizers of this webinar, is the Spanish representative organization in the European Space Agency, where Spain is a founding member since 1975. Spain continues to rank as one of its largest contributors and supporter of all optional program boards, including space exploration, earth observation programs, navigation, international space station, and space surveillance and tracking program. The European Space Astronomy Center, one of out of the nine ESA sites, is located in Madrid since 2004 
and it's the home of European Space Agency, Space Telescope, and Planetary Science missions. In today's seminar, I hope you will learn some of the challenges the Spanish space sector is conducting, and I also expect you to find some avenues of collaboration with the Spanish space sector. Thank you very much for your attention. Arigato gozaimasta. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. The next speaker is Mr. Javier Ponce, Director General of our organization, CDTI. Mr. Ponce, please turn on your microphone and the camera. Um, good morning. Uh, Minasama konnichiwa. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Japan, and, and welcome everyone uh, to this online event titled uh, CDTI webinar on uh, Spanish space technology view and dialogue, in which uh, we aim to raise awareness of the technological potential of Spain and space sector to enhance uh, the industrial R&D cooperation between both countries, Japan and Spain. I would like to personally thank all the speakers uh, of, the, of the session and the audience uh, who join us today, and especially the Spanish ambassador in Japan for uh, addressing us uh, the opening remark, Mr. Uh, Toledo. I also want to express my sincere gratitude to Mrs. Kyoko Dateki from Yasa, who participates as a guest in this session. She is going to offer us Yasa's uh, view uh, as a Japanese agency specialized in the space sector. Let me say something in relation to CDTI. Uh, below the, the words of uh, our ambassadors, CDTI, the Spanish National Funding Agency for Industrial uh, Research, Development, and Innovation Project uh, developed by Spanish companies. CDTI was created in 1977 and actually is under the Ministry of Science and Innovation. Our mission is to enhance the Spanish company's competitiveness and internationalization through innovation. We focus on realizing the Spanish company's technological level by funding their research and development projects, both at national and at international scope. I would like to, uh, to say something in relation to the recent development of our uh, R&D activities in Spain. It's true that uh, we are below uh, some other developed countries, but uh, we are making big efforts during the last uh, two years in relation to the budget, uh, to the public budget, in order to promote the private investment on uh, research and development. One of the priorities of the government of Spain in the R&D field is to increase private investment investment in R&D in order to contribute to the change of the production model in our country by promoting and creating a structure that could make possible a better use of the scientific knowledge and technological development. In relation to that, we will devote the recent uh, new European fund that uh, has been uh, allocated uh, to Spain. And we are uh, just launching a call for proposals for uh, recovering a new project, new and, and uh, uh, developed project of Spanish companies. In order to promote our international cooperation, CDTI has an overseas network. In Asian region, uh, we count uh, with, uh, with four offices in uh, India, China, South Korea, and Japan. The office of Japan uh, was established in uh, 1986 actually it's uh, called uh, CDTI Sourced Japan. Sourced uh, has to be a stance, uh, for the Spanish Office for Science and Technology. And it was the first overseas office of CDTI. So uh, we would like to thank uh, the, the Japan uh, government, just all the, all the facilities that uh, they uh, gave us in the past to maintain our uh, office there and, and to develop activities with Spanish uh, companies. The activities of CDTI office in Japan was changing uh, along with the Spanish economy structure. From the attraction of direct investment in the manufacturing sectors from Japan to Spain in the, in the 80s and, and 90s, to the support and coordination of the R&D co cooperation alliance between Spanish companies and Japanese entities since uh, the early first decade, decade of the 2000 up to the present time. 
This activity has been announced by signing in 2008 of an agreement with New Energy and Industrial Technology Development Organization, NIDO, for the establishment of a bilateral technological cooperation program called Japan-Spain Innovation Program. This is the umbrella that we use to finance both Japan and Spain cooperation projects between companies from Spain and companies uh, from Japan. If we pass to the space sector, I would like to say something in relation to our situation at the present. Uh, after that, uh, our director of space activities, uh, Juan Carlos Cortez, will uh, show you more details in relation to that. The importance, the importance of Spanish space technology is not well known, maybe it's outside uh, the European scope. So uh, today's purpose is to offer you a showcase in which you find the cutting edge research and technology development in the space sector in Spain. The space industry has a clear strategic character due to its contribution to society, capacity for innovation and value creation. In recent years, the Spanish space industry has been able to take advantage of the opportunities that has arisen both in institutional and commercial environments. This uh, uh, gives us the possibility to grow in size and take a qualitative leap in technological development. The Spanish space industry was consolidated from its uh, incipient origins nearly 40 years ago to, became, uh, to become an international leader. When Spain started its, its activities within the framework of the European Space Agency, ESA, the activities that our companies could access were at the lowest level of the value chain we were starting in the space sector. However, today we can affirm that Spain has moved from equipment supplier to carry out subsystems in complex missions, designing, manufacturing, launching, and operating complete missions, space missions, and leading large international projects in the state of the art of space science and technology. Since 2000, both TANOVA and direct employment in, the sec in this sector in Spain has multiplied by three, showing enormous strength. In the last 10 years, despite having experienced a serious financial crisis, the space sector has achieved a TANOVA growth of more than 75%, job creation above. 50% productivity and export activity much higher than national average and extra reinvestment of profit in research and development activities. It's important to me to point out the relevance of the national ecosystem that has been created, where all the actors related to space, industry, universities, research centers, public and private users, all are working together, cooperating and contributing to promoting the sector. Today, you will have the opportunity uh, to see some uh, companies' experience and some research centers in Spain related to, uh, to space. On the one hand, <clears throat> I would like to uh, point out uh, two main uh, milestones uh, in the recent past. Uh, that uh, show uh, the, the new uh, focus of, uh, of Spain in, in uh, space. The ESA Ministerial Council held in Sevilla at the end of uh, 2019, chaired by Spain, which reached a record with 14.4 uh, billion euros subscription globally, surpassing for the first time the request of the ESA uh, Director General. Spain committed a payment to ESA to up to 1,543 million in the period 2020-2026, with an average of uh, 2,040 million per year in the first uh, four years. Thus, Spain maintains and strengths the fifth place in a specific way in the agency, with 7.5% of the total budget. In the optional programs, the bulk of the investment are concentrated in earth observation, launchers, 
and exploration. On the other hand, a significant milestone was the approval in May of this year of the European Union Space, space Program, endowed uh, by, uh, with about uh, 15,000 million euros throughout the period 2021-2027, uh, on which uh, 8,700 million euros will go directly to ESA, either from the Commission European or from uh, the European Union Space Agency. The bulk of, the, of it going to Earth observation and navigation. And uh, I would like to say that uh, one Spanish company was uh, um, located uh, and, and uh, was con considered by uh, the European Commission to be the leader of one of the six missions of the Copernicus uh, program of the European uh, Union. Okay. So we are very Nice, a very nice position in uh, environment supervision by space. <clears throat> Finally, we act uh, with importance to bilateral cooperation in order to strength relationships with other space agencies, where our agreements with NASA and Roscosmos are some examples. We would like very much like to reinforce cooperation with Japan, hoping this event uh, will contribute to it. I will encourage the Japanese audience to consider Spain as a potential partner for co collaboration when you plan joining the research and technological development projects in relation to space, because we have similar uh, lines of research for the new uh, future of uh, new space. Thank you for your attention. Goseiko arigato, gozai masita. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Jorge, for your keynote remarks. Now, I ask today's special guest speaker, Ms. Kyoko Dateki from Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency to come up. Ms. Dateki is the Director of Business Development and Industrial Relationship Department of JAXA. Dateki-san, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dan Parasan. Well, um, first of all, uh, thank you very much for everyone. Uh, it's our great pleasure to be given this opportunity. And I will show you my presentation first. Okay. I hope you can see this. And yes, and I hope this presentation helps our mutual understanding between Japan and Spain um, since the ambassador Toledo uh, mentioned our facing space uh, markets are expanding now. So uh, we need to work more for the industrial relation and the business space business development. Well, uh, so my name is Kyoko Tadiki, as Tambara san explained, uh, introduced. I work for JAXA more than 20 years. Uh, with a legal background, and now uh, it is uh, time to work for the industrial relation now. So today I explain about JAXA, the international partners and the space industry. First of all, I explain to this JAXA. Well, JAXA is one of the national research and development agency and the Cabinet Office, Ministry of Education, Science and Technology, Ministry of Communication, and Ministry of Economy supervise JAXA. So what makes us unique is that those four supervising ministers, ministries uh, bring us di diverse characters from many of policy aspects. Cabinet Office and uh, Ministry of Economy uh, take leadership of Japan's space uh, industry uh, promotion policy with a uh, strong political support. So JAXA can play an active role in this field. So there are some figures. I'll explain the overview of our organization. So JAXA was established in 2003 by integrating three organizations. Now the budget is about $1,800 million every year, 
and the number of staff is around 1,500. This seems to be small on a scale, but we are doing various projects. Uh, in the government basic space plan, Japan is placed as a core implementation agency that supports the space development and the utilization of the entire government. To practice this role, JAXA issued a medium to long-term plan. The plan formulates six priority items for the development and the utilization of Japan's aerospace technology. So you can see the six items, including the, um, the space security or science or yeah, uh, including aviation as well. So this slide shows JAXA's main activity. The space transportation system is, uh, yeah, which keeps high reliability. Now the success rate of Japanese rockets are more than 97%. So it's 2A, it's 2B and the Ypsilon. So the second, uh, as observation technology uh, that is indispensable for our lives is also our project. And the third, manned on the left, uh, you can see the Mr. Noguchi, astronaut Noguchi. So the manned space activities uh, through the ISS project is our also main, our activity. The space science and exploration, you can see this one is Hayabusa. Uh, I hope you know the Hayabusa or Hayabusa 2 is a quite famous <laughs> satellite now in Japan. So the exploration activity uh, produce, now that produces uh, outstanding result to the science world, I hope. And the advanced aviation research contribute to the aviation industry now. So we have um, many uh, types of activities and projects. Now JAXA has more than uh, 50 projects for this uh, space activity. So the latest news is the Ypsilon rocket. So it is planned to be launched on the uh, October 1st. You can see the kind of poster. Uh, yeah, it's, it showed the, our launch. The, it, this is the fifth launch of the Ypsilon rocket. And Ypsilon has developed to be a compact launch system by reducing operating costs as a middle-sized rocket. It can, the Ypsilon, will carry rise to satellite with six innovative demonstration components, four microsatellites and four CubeSats. The launch campaign will be on live streaming, so please look forward to it. And so I will tell you about the JAXA's international partners. Since the space project is so dynamic that international cooperation is indispensable to realize the project, such as International Space Station and the space exploration. Now, JAXA has partnership with about uh, 70 countries around the world. Other than 50 countries of the International Space Station partners, we are engaging in various cooperation, such as support for the utilization of the International Space Station and the risk mitigation activities, including disaster management by using space technologies with Asia Pacific region. So you can see the map on with the the marks of each uh, space agencies and other um, institutions. So focusing on Europe, we are long standing good relationship with the several countries and organizations, including European Space Agency. JAXA's president, Mr. Yamakawa, uh, he is in all the photos. And in 2019, uh, he was invited to the ESA uh, Board of Directors to introduce JAXA's activities. And I hope that JAXA's cooperation with CUNES, you can see on the down left, uh, the photo shows that the uh, Prime Minister, Abe, the previous pre Prime Minister, smiling uh, for the cooperation with uh, Europe. And I, yes. 
So the, I hope these photos show that JAXA has strongly connected to the European space community and shares knowledge and values for the cooperation. Here, here we introduce example of cooperation between Spain and JAXA. First one is PAF, PAF, PAF adapter, which is the interface component of the H3, look at the Japanese rocket, and HTVX under the development by JAXA. HTVX is um, transportation cargo to the International Space Station. And CASA is involved in this development and manufacturing process. Um, the, uh, down on the down, Side. The second one is a very high resolution Earth observation camera installed in the GEM, the Japanese experimental module on the International Space Station. So this is by the Satlantis. If I don't make mistake, I, I don't. I'm, if I'm not wrong, at the pronunciation, it's Satlantis demonstrated the technology using GEM's exposed experimental platform. The project successfully obtained about 20,000 images, photos. We heard that Satlantis develops high resolution as observation payloads for microsatellites by constellation and globally provides its service and the products. So JAXA in the space industry, it According to the basic plan on the space policy, so uh, the government of Japan issued a basic plan on space policy originally in 2070, then revised it four times. This plan mentions to double the market size of the Japanese space industry in 15 years. Therefore, this means an amount of money scale of expected to reach roughly 90 billion US dollars. The vision requires that in our understanding, what we focus on is not only expanding the market itself, but also expanding the number of players and stakeholders consisting the space market. This is an overview of the government's strategic measure for newcomers to space business, mainly for the startups. These measures affirm and endorse the vision shown in the previous slide. This measure includes networking opportunities, business idea contests or prizes, in addition to the possible support using public funds for the appropriate growth of the startups. So Jackson, let me introduce our unique program, JAXA's program called JSPARC, JAXA Space Innovation Through Partnership and Co-Creation. This program started in 2018, along with the government policy in the previous slide. I dare say co-creation has a unique, uh, unprecedented character as a JAXA program. JSPARC producers uh, who are assigned for each project has a role to jointly create a feasible business plan during the concept planning or study phase. Then the company and JAXA proceed to demonstration in the following phase. Through this process, JAXA and the commercial partner maximize JAXA's technology heritage and develop the planned space business in a short, speedy cycle. JSPAC aims to create the, and expand space-related business as well as space technical innovation. So that's our um, great purpose to uh, organize this uh, partnership. So currently, 34 co-creation activities have been started under this JSPAC program. Each product, each product range from a space business with cutting edge technology, such as space transportation and uh, space debris removal, to the business which is familiar to the daily life, such as education and entertainment. We think partnering with those commercial capability are one of the key aspects for making space industry sustainable.
So space exploration is now one of the JAXA's main activity, but this cannot progress without collaborating with the private companies. So a range of missions are underway to ensure that humans can engage in sustainable activities on the moon and on the Mars, etc. So first one on the left side, uh, JAXA's Space Exploration Innovation Hub Center coordinate more than 100 joint researches with the companies and the institutions. The research uh, to aim to use the technologies used on the ground could be applied on the surface on the moon. So this uh, research could improve industrial competitiveness, we hope. The secondary, it is also our challenge to develop the lunar cruiser by the joint research with the Japanese giant company. On the other side, uh, some of JSPAC, the previous projects, are also aiming to be used in the future lunar base. In addition to uh, activities that work in collaboration with the companies, we also support commercialization itself. S Booster is a business contest launched in 2017 that welcomes business ideas from startups, individuals, including students and non-space sectors. This contest will assist business development through mentoring with more than 30 mentor mentors and awards the prize, prize money, uh, up to 100, or oh, I can account, oh, $10 million for the highest award. Since 2019, the opportunity has been expanded to those who are in the Asia and Oceania, so Asia Pacific region. It is sponsored by the cabinet office uh, of the government and the government of Japan and co-sponsored by JAXA. And NEDO, uh, we heard it before, uh, NEDO and JAXA is also supporting the program. JISTA is a Thai, uh, Thai uh, space agency, and they also support our um, Asian Pacific uh, uh, um, teams. <laughs> Excuse me. And so we are also support exhibitions, JAXA supports exhibitions held overseas where companies can show their strengths and get business opportunities. So the famous one is Symposium and IEC, the next one is IEC Dubai. And so in the Dubai, seven Japanese company are scheduled to exhibit. Ex exhibit at the APL stuff, it's an Asian uh, Pacific uh, Space Agencies Forum, Space Industry Workshop will be organized this year. So not only big space companies, but also space, uh, new space people will present and join the discussion there. Finally, there are some helpful sites. JAXA has a portal site for company information. There are many companies related to space technology. You can find um, the contact point of Japanese space companies from established big company to small and medium sized ones. The Jig Tech, J Good Tech, is a, we call it Jig Tech, is a business matching site, including global companies. It is operated by the Japanese government affiliated organization. If you are interested in the technology of the Japanese company overall, please don't miss it. So that's all for today uh, for, from me. I thank uh, your attention. I, I thank your attention to my presentation. I hope today is one small step for us, but one giant leap for the both country. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kateki-san, for your very info informative presentation. The next speaker is uh, as Mr. Juan Carlos Cortez from CDTI. Mr. Cortez is the director of space, large research infrastructures, and dual programs. He is going to show us the overview of the space sector in Spain. Mr. Cortez, the floor is yours. Thank you, Aki. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone, depending on which part of the world you are. 
First and foremost, I would like to start by thanking Ambassador Toledo for his participation in this in this event and Miss uh, um, Dateki for the uh, participation in in this uh, webinar representing JAXA, and of course. A special thanks to the uh, CDTI team in charge of the organization of this uh, far-reaching event. So, I would like to share with you some uh, uh, views on the space domain and, in particular, the Spanish activity in this uh, strategic uh, domain that space is becoming more and more nowadays. So, I think that you can you can uh, see my uh, presentation. First of all, I would like to, to let's say, uh, share with you what is the size of the Spanish uh, uh, space sector. There is an institutional investment yearly of roughly 500 million euro. Half of this uh, amount uh, is channeled through, through ESA, through the European Space Programme. And the remaining amount is uh, split between different, different uh, organizations, in particular, the European Commission, UMESAT, and a small amount through our uh, national uh, program devoted to mainly scientific scientific mission. Space uh, Spain is the fifth uh, contributor to ESA and the fourth contributor to the European Union. And we are uh, active in a large panoply of space domain, ranging from SST, Space Situational Awareness through launcher, passing through telecommunications, earth observation, navigation, and quite important, because this is, let's say, a, a quite clear vehicle for cooperation, exploration. The amount of, of, uh, of resources involved in the exploration program is so huge that the only way to embark on this uh, program is through cooperation. I think that this is something in, very important to, 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 let's say, to highlight. Apart from this, from this investment, we have in our soil quite relevant infrastructure dealing with space. We have uh, several centers uh, for um, the uh, control of our fleet of satellites in telecommunication in particular. We have um, the deep space station in Febrero for the, for the control and monitoring of uh, far uh, away uh, system, uh, exploring Mars, uh, the Moon, and other, and other uh, planets. We have the Archiving and Processing Center for Copernicus, the cooperation uh, uh, segment in, in, in Spain. We channel all the data through this, uh, through this infrastructure, and we have the archive of all the application dealing with or stemming from the Copernicus data. We have, of course, important infrastructure dealing with, uh, with security, in particular with Galileo. We have in, in Torrejón, nearby Madrid, the European Union Satellite Center, and we have um, in uh, Villano de la Cañada, a village in the northwest of, uh, of Madrid, the ESAC Center. ESAC Center is the reference infrastructure for the science program. Some words about my, my organization, CDTI. CDTI stands for Center for the Development of uh, Industrial Technology. CDTI is um, uh, the Spanish Innovation Agency. Spain doesn't have uh, a space agency. The space activities are channeled through, through the Innovation Agency, which is precisely CDTI. We are a relative young organization, but uh, with a lot of experience. We were created back in 1977. Now we report to the Ministry of Science and Innovation, and you have here some, 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 some figures. We have supported more than 15,000 companies so far, and we have mobilized more than 25 billion of, uh, of uh, euro. What is the, 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 main, the main role of CDTI uh, dealing with space? First of all, as uh, Mr. Ponce has said at the beginning of the, of the event, 
CDTI is since uh, 1986 the Spanish delegation to ESA. It is quite important. Recently, uh, you know that the European Union has become very active in the space domain. Indeed, since the Lisbon Treaty, the European Union uh, has a special and concrete competences in space. And um, recently, the uh, European Space Program the, uh, was launched uh, from this year until 2027, amounting to roughly 15 billion euro. And CDTI is the coordinator of the Spanish representation in the comitology of this uh, European Union space, space program. This is quite uh, important uh, event since now in Europe we have the technical body, which is ISA, which is, let's say, where the technical expertise is really is, and we have a very important the political branch for space that is the European Union. So the technical plus the political is, uh, believe me, a quite, quite important, quite uh, a relevant combination. I think that is the, the right way of doing things. CDTI is, apart from that, the uh, representative in different international bodies, the NCOs in particular, the Committee for on Air Force Observation Satellite, UMESAT, and European Union SST program. And in this, in this respect, CDTI manages, is dependent on the year, but manages um, around roughly between 75, 85 of the total institutional investment in space. Bilateral collaboration. I think that 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 uh, JAXA has has uh, read my mind when they have said that we have collaborated in the past in the payload adapters and in the earth observation uh, earth observation uh, domain, in particular with the launch of Salantis uh, uh, some some uh, months ago. But apart from that, CDTI is very active in 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 collaboration. Indeed, we have the bulk of our budget channeled through ISA, but, but the international cooperation run highest in our agenda. In particular, we have a, a, an agreement, a memorandum of understanding signed with NASA. We are cooperating with, with uh, the states in all the mission to Mars so far, with Roscosmos in different, in different domain, in particular in the ultraviolet um, domain, with Agnes, we have a very, very uh, uh, close cooperation, and of course, we'll deal out. And, and I hope that this will be, let's say, a catalyst. This event will be a catalyst of the cooperation with our colleagues of JAXA. I think that that we can we can look for avenues for cooperation because uh, I understand that space is an strategic asset for both countries, and and, and we can we can find without any doubt future programs to to cooperate uh, on. Some uh, numbers about our our industry. We have uh, we have uh, a quite um, diversified space sector, with a uh, uh, turnover around 900 million euro per, per year. We have two operators uh, in 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 telecommunications and earth observation. We have a leading role in SST. Indeed, we are now CDTI is now. Uh, leading the European Union Consortium in SST, and we have a large, uh, let's say, experience in the space system, and we embark on the development of satellites, payload, ground segment, and of course, of course, nowadays quite important application. You know that uh, the satellites are becoming uh, more and more a commodity, and the society and the space sector is putting the emphasis precisely in the application, try to turn data coming from satellite into application and application into something useful for, for, for society. In particular, I have to say that the eruption in the La Palma Island in, in Spain is closely monitoring for the Copernicus, for the Copernicus system, and the results are, are really impressive. 
Some examples of, uh, of cooperation, PROBA-3, this is a, a high precise formation uh, satellite flight. We are, we are performing this, this uh, mission in, in cooperation with, with ECNES, and the launch date is foreseen in 2023. This is uh, basically to have some kind of uh, um, uh, big system base of a small system flying in, uh, in, um, in formation. This is a technology that will allow to launch, uh, to launch in the, in the years to come large telescopes based, telescope based on small pieces and small satellites. Earth observation. We started in 2007 our national uh, Earth observation program with uh, Ingenio. You can see the photograph uh, there. Unfortunately, we have an, an accident in the launch in, in, in last December, but we continue uh, along the lines um, set up by Ingenio and we are defining the future as far as the observation in Spain is, is concerned. Indeed, um, the second generation of our radar, radar satellite is ongoing, and we are deciding internally in our ministry what will be our view concerning the future of high resolution optical satellites. Uh, so far, we are we are very active in in the earth observation domain, uh, in the in the in the field of instrument with uh, eyes. This was was uh, let's say done by a Spanish company and is in the US at uh, fleet, but not only in in, in um, um, uh, instruments. Uh, we have let's say go up in the added value chain, and currently we have. Uh, industrial sector mature enough to embark in the development and definition of large, complete large space system. An example, the, 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 the more recent one is LSTN. LSTN stands for Land Surface Temperature Monitoring. This is a satellite uh, 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 within the Copernicus um, uh, constellation with a budget of roughly 400 million euro and is uh, is uh, led uh, is uh, is uh, being defined and built by our uh, uh, spanish company airbus spain i think that mar will will intervene later on and will will brief you on the important feature of this uh, mission but i can i can anticipate uh, you that uh, this mission is key to launch to to, to fight eh? against the the climate change is a uh, key piece in this in this uh, in this uh, uh, domain by the way and uh, we started in 2007 with SBOS was the mission where Spain uh, uh, became I think a, 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 a prime in this in this uh, uh, complete system in this in this small satellite oriented to uh, measure soil moisture and ocean salinity. Uh, Spanish companies uh, and Spanish research uh, uh, center were responsible both of the complete mission of the complete instrument and the uh, industrial development of all these microwave imaging radiometer. So this was the first one, and from now, uh, from that mission onwards, we will uh, become. Um, acknowledge a company, acknowledge a, 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 a country in the domain of the microwave imaging radiometers. There are many examples uh, that I imagine that, that you will have the opportunity to, to, to know in the, in the course of this, of this session. Quite important, exploration at ESAN. As I said before, we have two ways of, of uh, materializing our, our ambition and cooperation. One is through ESA. Indeed, I think that, that we have cooperated with, with, with JAXA, but through ESA, not directly. But the other, the other one is through a cooperation, through cooperation, bilateral cooperation. In this sense, we have participated in all, in all the uh, NASA mission to, to, to Mars. We are responsible of the meteorological um, um, meteorological uh, um, uh, uh, station, and we are responsible 
for the higher antenna. These antennas allow the, 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 the rover to communicate with uh, a satellite in, in orbit uh, of Mars or directly from the Mars surface to, uh, to Earth without, let's say, this intermediate step of a uh, satellite orbiting, orbiting uh, uh, Mars. And I think that in this field of uh, cooperation, there are good prospects of cooperation with our friends of Japan. I think that uh, uh, JAXA is, is, is very interested, and I, I, I know uh, in the um, uh, exploration and there are there will be in the in the coming uh, uh, years a lot of opportunities mainly in the domain of uh, mars in the domain of uh, of um, uh, moon and of course in the domain of the uh, ice and giants it's still quite important this is an operational system that uh, CDTI is uh, currently uh, leading and offering service to the European to the European uh, uh, Union. I think that that uh, this is uh, you know perfectly what what uh, uh, compose the system. Basically, it's a, a set of uh, of uh, sensor with a control center, and the main objective is to provide uh, a satellite operator with reliable information concerning. Uh, re-entry, fragmentation of collision. I think that uh, I'm not going to, 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 to go uh, beyond, but simply you have here um, a, a picture of the last development of CDTI in this domain. This is the, 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 the radar located in the south of Spain that has been transferred to our Ministry of Defense. And with this uh, uh, biograph, I stopped my presentation. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Cortez. Uh, please withdraw your presentation. Thank you very much. Now we start the session of the research and the technology development presentation. The first speaker is Mr. Victor Parro from the Spain Astrobiology Center. Mr. Parro is a director of the center and the weather as well as the Senior Researcher of Molecular Evolution Department. Mr. Palo, please turn on your microphone and camera, please. Mr. Palo? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Go on. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Um, thank you, CDTI, for, for giving us the, the opportunity to show uh, our uh, capabilities, uh, the Centro de Astrobiología. And, um, I want to, uh, well, astrobiology, I think I convinced that uh, uh, is uh, is um, a driving force for technology uh, and uh, science in, in space uh, exploration. I think is is one of the driving forces for development of technology in the coming in coming years. Um, let's see if it works. Excuse me, I don't know how to move this. Okay, so uh, astrobiology um, uh, has as, uh, lies on, on the general hypothesis that life is a consequence of the of the evolution of the energy and the matter in the in the universe, and for thus uh, for that for thus uh, to, to corroborate this hypothesis, uh, we need a, a huge effort of a multidisciplinary. Um, um, endeavor with uh, with uh, a lot of uh, disciplines working from the astronomy, uh, cosmology, planetology, geology, biology, and biochemistry to understand the key processes that uh, took place in this uh, general scenario from the from the Big Bang to the formation of the first elements, the galaxies, the first molecules, and the first exoplanets, and, and the and to, to the planet to the planetary environment that allowed to develop a complex chemistry. And, and later, uh, uh, and eventually, the, the appearance, the, the origin of life. Uh, detecting or uh, finding life in other planets would be a corroboration of this hypothesis. So that's why we need to develop a lot of science and a lot of technology. Uh, science, for example, to understand uh, the extremes of life. Uh, you know, it's, it's very expensive to go to the space and other planets, so we 
travel to extreme environments on Earth that somehow resembles those uh, that we can find in other planetary environments like uh, Mars or the of the ocean worlds, for example. We've been working in Rio Tinto, the Western in Spain, for many years uh, to understand the, the extreme microbiology uh, in the surface, in, in, in their waters that are extremely acidic and iron rich, uh, uh, dominated by iron, iron rich chemistry, which is uh, something that we found in many places on Mars. Uh, we also explored the deep surface in this area where we found microorganisms living in the absence of light. For example, here we discover viable cyanobacteria that used to live with light. With, with light. Now they are living in, uh, in the dark using perhaps um, um, geological sources as energy. We explored the uh, galactic environments. We uh, wanted to understand how the uh, radiation environment may may affect the the the, the, the uh, neighbor stars and neighbors uh, planetary system that somehow may condition may affect the, the, the evolution of any uh, habitable uh, planet we also uh, wanted to that science for for astrobiology requires also to simulate to somehow bring some part of the space to the lab. So what we are doing is to simulate uh, planetary uh, atmosphere. For example, we want to, we simulate uh, the interstellar space conditions. So for that, we need to develop this type of machine, this type of instrumentation. And we have uh, here several similar simulation chambers that are giving us a, a interesting uh, result for, for uh, understanding the space conditions. We also, for sure, participate in uh, international uh, endeavors. Uh, we are, uh, war some of our colleagues are working in, in um, tele space telescopes like the Plateau uh, from the European, uh, uh, from ESA. Um, that is, um, the, the aim is to study the, um, the or characterizing exoplanets, the JWST, a space telescope from NASA, ESA, and CSA. For sure, we are working on the ExoMars uh, uh, rover uh, that is uh, uh, that is uh, planning for for launching for next year. Where we are working the science of the Raman instrumentation. Also, uh, is, we have a, a uh, well a small participation with the MMX pro, uh, project. That is um, uh, the idea is to to explore the Martian moons. Uh, we are uh, with DLR in developing some as, some part of the of the Raman instrumentation. Uh, in, we're involved in the in the Keops uh, mission, uh, also in some others um, like the the Harmony instrument that is uh, that is devoted for for the uh, ground telescope DLT in the coming years. So, uh, but perhaps our flagship uh, flagship uh, um, uh, projects are those related to to Mars explorations. We are on Mars since 2012 uh, with the REMS environmental station uh, on the rubber uh, Curiosity. Uh, REMS uh, has a, a several uh, environmental sensors from wind, humidity, temperature, radiation, etc. And we are monitoring these parameters since then every single day. So, and it's still working. We also uh, went to Mars with the uh, uh, with NASA uh, in the inside mission with the twins instrument that also uh, containing to uh, well the, the temperature and, and wind sensor for the station uh, and recently we are also with a meta uh, environmental station which is a meta is a uh, the idea is, is uh, more ambitious. It's our set of uh, sensors uh, containing for for sensor for wind uh, characterization, humidity, temperature, radiation, uh, even the, the characterizing the dust uh, in the atmosphere. So the idea is to to understand the, the dynamics of the atmosphere uh, on Mars. And uh, well, this meta is on Mars since uh, February this year. He's uh, performing very well. And uh, uh, well, in fact, we were in a hard end of just uh, after the landing because we NASA requires us to, our data to to well somehow to help us them to to take the decision to make the decision of flying the the small uh, helicopter in January. So uh, yeah, um, soon after that landing, we were able to report the first weather. Uh, 
the world first, uh, the first weather report from, from the gesture creator, uh, and thanks to our instrumentation that uh, has uh, been uh, uh, operated here since then, and, and we have uh, also the PI in, uh, in our institute. Now they, they, they are uh, analyzing the data, they're recovering, and I'm pretty sure that in coming months we will have uh, published interesting results from, from, from this data. So uh, that means that uh, we have an unprecedented uh, fact is that, that we have three environmental stations in three uh, different sites uh, in, on Mars, all of them uh, operative, although I think the twins one is perhaps is nearly to, to finish his, his mission because of the death of the, of the mission too. But uh, it's interesting because we can have uh, um, very interesting uh, uh, report of how the, the weather or the dynamics of the atmosphere of Mars can, can work. Uh, we are also working in other projects, uh, looking into the future, it's just uh, we are developing uh, instrumentation for live detection, uh, in that case for molecular, uh, for molecular uh, biomarker detection, we are working with NASA in some mission concepts like the icebreaker, uh, whose uh, idea is just to drill in the northern terrain or those places where the ice is uh, near the surface and to analyze the, 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 the samples in, that, in our case with our instrument, uh, which is uh, uh, equipped with a biosensor for detecting biomarkers. So it's some, uh, we're doing some progress on this. And one important thing in, in our institute is also is uh, outreach. Uh, we think that science has to be transmitted to society. We have uh, visits of uh, schools every uh, week, so well <laughs> before COVID. Now we hope we can we can restart this again. We have the uh, International Astrobiology School in Santander uh, in collaboration. Uh, it's a uh, collaboration with NASA, and it's held. Uh, it's been held since uh, 2003 every year, except uh, last and current year. But okay, we hope to to recover this activity also next year. And um, yeah, we have relevant visit to our institute. Um, finally, our work uh, has been awarded somehow after the, our 20, 20 years uh, anniversary uh, two years ago in the cover of the uh, flagship journal in the field, which is astrobiology. So um, just to thank our institutions for, for, for supporting us from the very first beginning, Sedet is or for sure is doing, uh, without Sedet, we, CDTI, we, we couldn't do many of these things. So um, for sure, the, the INTA, our mother institution, and CS, CSIC, um, NASA, and ERC, European Union, European uh, ESA. Uh, so I think we need all of them, and thanks for, for, for supporting us. Mr. Dambar. Thank you very much, Mr. Palo. Please withdraw your presentation. Thank you very much. The next topic is about the satellite manufacturing, and the speaker is Ms. Mal Fernandez from Airbus Defense and Space Spain. She is a key accountant manager of space. Ms. Fernandez, the floor is yours. Domarigato, Dambarasan, Mr. Dambara, thank you very much. Um, konnichiwa, good morning. Let me share my skin. So, um, first of all, I want to thank CDTI, the Spanish Embassy in Japan, and the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency for organizing this webinar and for inviting Airbus to present their space business in Spain. As you know, Airbus is widely known for their commercial airplanes, but the company has other divisions, such as helicopters, defense products, and space. And here we are. Airbus Space Systems in Spain, former Casa Espacio, started their first space activities back in 1966. Now it is the prime contractor of the country, the main one, capable of delivering complete satellite-based systems. 
We closely work with the Spanish space industry, organisms, and academia in order to grow together in the acquisition of forefront technological capabilities. Let me show you some examples of complete satellites, such as the National Earth Observation Satellites, uh, like Mr. Juan Carlos Cortez presented, PATH, the radar satellite, and Ingenio, the optical satellite, the scientific satellite KEOPS for the characterization of exoplanets, and it's a mission, very successful by now. The Astrobiology Center also worked there. And the, we're already working now in the, in the recently won contract, land surface uh, temperature monitoring from the Copernicus uh, constellation. And here we're also leading a, a group of 60 companies from 18 ESA member states. Um, we are capable of delivering all these, um, in, in all these cases, Airbus in Spain interpreted the customer specified requirements. We translate them into requirements for the subsystems and equipment suppliers, and we develop the complete system. We deliver our satellites in orbit and hand over their operation to the customers. Once we fully validate their compliance to the required performance. Now, further to complete satellites and as embarked systems provider, Airbus in Madrid has the technological capability and expertise to supply microwave instruments like radiometers or radars and payloads based on active antenna technologies for several purposes like navigation or communications, whether commercial or secure. Again, leading a large consortium of Spanish and European companies. Even though we have grown to these system level capacities, as specialists in structures in composite materials, we still supply structures for satellites and launchers and antenna reflectors. As well, all our products include their thermal control, harness, mechanisms, and separation systems as needed. Some data about us. Last year, in 2020, our sales reached 173 million euro with 558 employees, most of them highly qualified. As I mentioned, since we started working on space activities, we have participated in most Spanish and European space programs like ESA missions and European launchers. And we keep growing. So, We need to move to larger facilities. We will rejoin our colleagues of Air Commercial and Military Aircraft Center in the south of Madrid. The first step with the launch structures, new state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities that you can see in the pictures. They are already finished and operative. And very soon in 2023, we will be also moving the complete uh, facilities of Barajas to the south, together with our launcher colleagues, uh, in order to hold, to have our new uh, clean rooms for satellites integration purposes and offices. Now, let me show you some examples of our activities. I want to highlight, uh, as already mentioned by, by, by Ms. Um, I don't want to say it. My Ms. Kyoko Dateki uh, and by uh, Juan Carlos Cortez, the fact that we already work with, with uh, Japan uh, for the supply of the H2A and H3 structures, either payload adapters or multiple post carriers. Uh, we also participate uh, supplying structures for the American Falcon 9 or Northrop Grumman launchers. And definitely we've already uh, participated, as I mentioned, in the Ariane program launchers since the first uh, version. And now with the sixth version, Ariane 6, Vega and Vega C, the smaller launcher in Europe, and also for the use with payload adapters and separation systems. Here you can see an example of the SSO mission uh, with a Falcon 9 uh, launcher, um, where we launched up to 64 uh, satellites in a unique uh, way to, to mount uh, multiple 
uh, payload adapters. In all the cases, uh, we supply also the separation systems. Uh, let me just mention the fact that we have uh, just delivered the 150 uh, separation system now uh, with zero failures for all of these uh, launchers that I have just mentioned. Another technology that I would like to point out here is the, as I mentioned, the active antenna based payloads. Um, this is a mission quantum is just a demonstration of the evolution of our active antennas uh, for communications in this case. Um, right now we're working in the SpainSat next generation um, uh, active antenna payload in K band, in X band uh, for secure communications, which is a breakthrough, a major breakthrough in technology. And definitely we will also be supplying the, the active antenna for navigation for the Galileo second generation. So in, in all the needs that active antenna payloads are there, uh, we are capable of in any frequency uh, develop these, these active antennas. And as Mr. Juan Carlos mentioned, um, we just won the, the land surface and temperature monitoring um, mission of, the, of Copernicus. It's the first time that Spain leads uh, such an important mission. Um, we, are, we, are, we have a key role also in the, in the rest of the family of Sentinel satellites. Um, and I think it is very important that uh, to say that Spain is ready to cope with these kind of complex missions right now, uh, whether for Europe or whether for other um, um, agencies and countries. Um, as, as an example of, of cooperation, let me show you, uh, for example, the SMILE mission, which is uh, to study the space, whether it's the interaction of the, the solar wind particles with the Earth ma magnetosphere. In this case, Airbus Space Systems Spain is the responsible uh, of the European contribution to this international uh, mission with, a, with a being responsible of the payload uh, module. And as already mentioned also, uh, we, we developed and delivered the high gain antennas for the Curiosity and Perseverance rovers uh, together in this NASA mission. Um, they have not failed at all. Uh, everybody is very happy and satisfied with the, with the operations of the antennas. Uh, thanks to them, uh, the rovers, uh, like Juan Carlos mentioned, are capable of uh, communicating directly from the uh, Mars surface to, to Earth. And this is not an easy environment, as you, some of you know, that the Mars surface is full of dust. There are many winds. And, and, and as, as mentioned before, um, this, this kind of um, uh, hardware has to go up to Mars without any bacteria. It has to be free of any pollutants that we could bring over to the surface of, of Mars. Uh, this is another example of cooperation. And I hope we can continue cooperating with Japan. All our experiences have been uh, very satisfactory. So, arigatou gozaimasu to all of you. Uh, Mr. Tambara, please let me pass you the word. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Fernandez. The next topic is the space debris civilians. And we have today Ms. Mariela Graciano from GMV Aerospace and Defense. Ms. Graciano is the Executive Director of Strategy and Business Development of Thrive Systems and Robotics. Ms. Graciano, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Lambara San. Con uh, Isira, buenos dias a todos. And thank you very much to JAXA and CDTI for giving us the opportunity to present the capability in, uh, in Spain in the area of space security and planetary defense. Just allow me to, to spend a few seconds on, uh, on, on GMV, uh, the company where I'm working from already uh, 20 years. Uh, it's a full private company, full private Spanish company, but located at the moment in, in 11 countries with more than 2,000 employees uh, overall and more than uh, close to one uh, to 15,000 employees in, uh, uh, in the space domain. 
uh, showing a very positive growing trend and that made us now the number six in Europe for number of people, which makes us very proud. And we are very active in many areas, uh, downstream and upstream, space segment and ground segment. So uh, thank you very much to give us the, the possibility of representing um, and presenting this pain capability in those areas. So let's focus on the topic of the presentation. Um, as already mentioned by uh, Mr. Cortez, Spain has a very, very active and important role in the area of um, space situation uh, awareness. Space situation awareness, as known, is the European uh, the ESA initiative to uh, design to support the Europe independent uh, space access to uh, um, the use of uh, space uh, data. Uh, it is composed by three uh, main segments, space weather, uh, near earth object and uh, space surveillance and tracking SST. So overall, GMB as very, uh, Spain uh, and GMB within, uh, with other uh, entities in Europe, in uh, Spain, is very uh, active, is covering a very important and active role in this area in SST, in SST and now also in space traffic uh, management domain, um, uh, really covering a leading, um, a leading role um, not only GMV, but also with Amos, with Indra, focusing on this on different domain like uh, optical in case of Deimos, um, radar in case of Indra, passive ranging in, in case of GMV, and then not only limiting to industry, uh, also to extend those capability and those interest to um, to uh, research and development. Uh, institution and academia like the University Carlo III of Madrid, um, like the university, just a few examples, it's impossible to, to mention all the, all the players, like the University of Alcalá de Henares, focusing on uh, space weather, like the University of uh, Politecnica de Madrid, focusing on tethers and debris remediation, uh, having also a strong relation in terms of agreement for PhD studies, which is very important for generating uh, knowledge and for spread, spreading knowledge along our new generation, our sons. So, uh, and for this, we got very strong support from G CDTI, which, I mean, we, we have a very good relation and uh, with the European Space Agency. Uh, as already mentioned also from, uh, from Juan Carlos Cortez, uh, the Spanish industry is working in those areas from many, many years already, since the, the, the early 90s, and it is one of the main contributors of the ESA um, SSA S2 program, in particular for what concern the uh, space surveillance and tracking. Uh, it is uh, one of the um, members and founders of the uh, U uh, European Union Space Surveillance and Tracking Service, which is a federation of, of, of countries um, created in, an, in, 90, in, in 2015. Um, in, uh, the CDTI is coordinating the development of the operation of the Spanish uh, Space Surveillance and Tracking System in collaboration with the Space Minister of Defense. And as already mentioned, this includes a radar, telescope, passive range, uh, passive range uh, sensors and uh, operation centers, this as street talk, uh, which um, main objective is to catalog and furnish data relative to entry, collision probability, probability, probabilities, detection and tracking of fragment in case of explosion. So we are covering um, the entire a spectrum of possibility furnishing service, not only at its institutional level, but also at commercial uh, level. Um, as already, oops, excuse me, as already mentioned uh, also, uh, we are, uh, Spain at the moment is leading one of the two uh, contracts related with the European uh, Space Traffic Management Initiative. There are at the moment two study um, ongoing, uh, one led by Spain and particularly by PGMB, and the other one is French led, but also with Spanish um, participation. And <clears throat> we are also very, uh, very, uh, Spain is also very present in the safe uh, space safety coalition 
the EIF, the ACS, and the and the ICO. Um, and then, uh, as I already mentioned, I already anticipated all those all those uh, entity, all those uh, actions. Uh, are, are such that Spain, Spanish industry uh, are today into the position of providing SST or SSSA data uh, services to a large number of, uh, of operators, including uh, SkyPerfect JSAT, but not only. And we hope really to extend those capability and, and, and our um, spectrum of clients to anyone interested also in, uh, in, in Japan. And, and we are also collaborating in this area with uh, different uh, with um, Japanese uh, primes like uh, Melco in case in ground segment and uh, AHI in case of uh, data processing. So Spain is also has been also very active uh, in the area of space-based surveillance. Um, this is something less advanced in Europe than uh, what concerns the SSD uh, from ground-based uh, data. But anyway, there's been a couple of studies done by the European Space Agency uh, with, uh, with the goal of, uh, generate, of uh, assessing the feasibility of an operational space-based surveillance demo, uh, mission, uh, operational and downscale to a potential uh, demo mission. Uh, on, uh, and one of these has been led by, by GMB uh, in Spain, and the other one was led by a German uh, entity. Um, and we, we are also uh, in Spain um, working in, in, in mounting, in, in, in designing and developing a very a smart miniaturized space-based surveillance um, uh, system instrument, a small camera, uh, which is meant to fly uh, for the moment on the Galileo second generation uh, for self-monitoring, but we are also pushing to have them flying in 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 other um, in a uh, payload of opportunity or in in other constellation, both for uh, let's say reaching a level of um, let's say commercial or institutional uh, ser service or. Uh, for the self-monitoring of the, the constellation, uh, the, the, each spacecraft of the constellation members, as in case we are analyzing uh, for Galileo second generation. Uh, in parallel to what we are doing in the area of SST and very much related, Spain is has also very good capability in the area of active debris removal and in orbit servicing uh, in, in, in Spain and not limiting to GMB. Where, I mean, we are very proud to cover many of those the spectrum of technological capability, but uh, there are uh, other entities um, in Spain, uh, which are able to 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 offer um, services in this area, uh, very active and very important technology technological development in Spain in in, in autonomous rendezvous GNC, in onboard autonomy, in mechanism, in ground segment. Uh, in uh, there are very in, in these cases from GMB, we are almost a unique facility uh, where we test um, validated with fly data. It's called Platform Heart, where we are testing a complex, very complex uh, GNC system uh, for a um, scenario where a relative motion is due, uh, like Mars scenario, formation flying, uh, active debris removal, um, in orbit servicing, but we are also furnishing to clients the possibility of using uh, this uh, fantastic facility for testing their, their own system. As in this case, uh, in, in the picture, uh, the second one from uh, right side uh, is a test from a company, Astroscale Israel, where they are testing in our facility their um, um, mechanism for uh, geo-satellite uh, active debris removal. Also, uh, uh, here in planetary defense, Spain uh, is contributing. I have to say that uh, Japan is by far uh, the, the, the master of uh, NEO mission. It's a pleasure. It's, if allow me, it's more than 10 years that I have the pleasure of sharing chairman in the ESC uh, Space Exploration Committee with uh, Mr. with Dr. Kawaguchi, 
and uh, and I'm very much aware of the success of Japan in uh, Ayabusa one and two. So congratulations! It's very, my opinion, my own op humble opinion is a fantastic step ahead in the exploration and the knowledge of our universe. But now there is also an action between uh, Europe and, and, and NASA. It's an AIDA international collaboration. And uh, where uh, NASA will send early next year uh, an impactor for the first time to a binary asteroid. Uh, in, and a uh, few years later, um, Europe will send um, a probe to evaluate the effect of this impact and to gain uh, data that will be very much useful for planetary defense because it, they will allow to uh, validate scientific model, a model uh, in different uh, domains for a future, in case of future uh, treat. So uh, Spain is very active thanks of the support of uh, CDTI and, and the, Spain, the, the Spanish uh, government. Uh, we are at the moment working uh, for the one of the most complex system, which is the GNC subsystem. It's, a full, it's an autonomous GNC system. Um, Sener is uh, another Spanish company is, is, is working on the antenna. Uh, Thales Spain is also working on the deep space, space communication system uh, and um, South Spanish company called MSIS, they are working on the gravity uh, instrument on the Juventus CubeSat. Uh, ERA is going to fly to, um, to small CubeSat. Uh, we are, GMB is also responsible uh, of the GNC of, of one of those two CubeSat. And uh, Spain will also, through uh, MCs, will also uh, provide uh, one of the complex instrument and important instrument for, as I mentioned before, the possibility of gaining data for future planetary defense uh, actions. And with this, I close my presentation. I hope I gave the uh, an overview of the capability in the area of uh, from Spain and also from GMB. Here you have my email, so feel free to contact uh, in case you could would like to get more uh, details. And thank you very much again, Damara San. Thank you very much, Miss Graziano. Please enjoy your presentation. Thank you very much. And the next and the last topic of today is about the reusable launch vehicle. The speaker is Mr. Raul Torres from Payload Aerospace. Mr. Torres is the CEO and founder of the company. Mr. Torres, the floor is yours. Okay. There we go. Great. So I, I timeline that you see the screen, right? Okay, so thank you very much for uh, inviting us. Uh, thank you to CDTI uh, because of uh, uh, their trust uh, provided uh, along those those years, uh, both uh, the general director of, as well as uh, Juan Carlos Cortez. And well, we are a, a Spanish-based uh, company actually uh, supported by- uh, Excuse by me, Mr. Torres. We have a little bit echo of your sound. Okay. So let me check. Yes, improved. Yes, now improved, I think. Maybe now? Yes. Okay. Let's go on. Okay, perfect. Let me check. I will put the. Okay. So um, we were founded in uh, 2011. Um, so 10 years ago now. Uh, at this moment, we have raised the 34, uh, more than 34 million euro. We are entrepreneurial based uh, company founded by Raul Verdu and uh, myself uh, 10 years ago. We have uh, raised uh, about 34 million euros and we have uh, until today, six agreements, six uh, contracts with the European Space Agency, as well as the European Commission for Technology Development and uh, support uh, in the uh, small launchers uh, technology development. 
So we have also been focused on uh, rocket propulsion. That was uh, one of the main activities in the early days. Uh, we have uh, performed until uh, today more about the 100 test campaigns. We have a strong heritage on liquid propulsion systems for, for launchers, especially with uh, liquid oxygen and kerosene. Uh, we have today more than uh, 15,000 square meters of uh, facilities for both integration and engineering of uh, the entire propulsion systems and the entire uh, launch vehicle development. Um, three work centers uh, for both um, engineering and launching and uh, two world-class uh, partners for uh, technology development. One of them actually GMB that is in this, also in this uh, presentation with us today. Um, the key data for today for, for, for us is that we have two launch vehicle programs development, Mura 1, that is a suborbital launch vehicle intended to be used also as a demonstrator for a larger uh, vehicle development that is actually Mura 5. And Mura 5 is a micro launcher for putting satellites into orbit. So the objective of this uh, launch vehicle is to put uh, uh, in the baseline configuration 450 kilograms uh, satellite into lower orbit, but we can reach up to 900 kilograms for certain missions like the equatorial uh, launches. Um, we have uh, several locations, Elche, where we are located in the Mediterranean Sea, close to Valencia, where we basically uh, do the engineering and the integration of propulsion and also stages, then Teruel between Madrid and Barcelona, where we do the testing for, uh, for the propulsion systems, and uh, Huelva, close to uh, Seville, where we, do the, where we will do the launch of Mura 1 and French Guiana where we will do the launch of uh, Mura 5. So here you see the locations uh, in the map of, of Spain, as well as uh, French Guiana in South America, uh, in French territory, but is the Europe's spaceport for the uh, European institutional launch vehicles, Ariane 5, soon Ariane 6 and Vila. Um, facilities in Elche, as I mentioned before, are clearly focused on the engineering as well as the integration of all the components we perform, the structures for propulsion, also continuing with the integration of the uh, avionics as well as the ground equipment for supporting launches uh, in both sides. Um, we have also, as I mentioned, uh, propulsion testing facilities for testing engines or for testing stages uh, in Teruel. In Teruel is a, is a rural area between Madrid and Barcelona that has been promoted in the past years for uh, performing new activities and space is one of them. So we are there and inside, inside of an industrial airport focused for parking uh, aircrafts as well as for uh, liquid propulsion testing uh, activities. Here you see the uh, two launch vehicles were now running. And Mura 1 is uh, one month away of being put vertical for the first time in our history. So we are very close of uh, showing the first launch vehicle fully integrated and the one that is going to be qualified for the launch. Uh, it's a 13 meter length, uh, it's about three floors. And, uh, and this, uh, the, the precursor is the, the president of the uh, Mura 5. So Mura 5, as, as I mentioned, it's an orbital uh, launch vehicle capable of putting 450 kilograms payload that is about 32 meters length. But, the, but uh, both launch vehicles are very similar in terms of architecture. So it's basically uh, a bigger uh, development, but in terms of subsistence are, are basically equal. So here, basically, uh, quick remarks about Mira 1. As a launch vehicle, as a suborbital demonstrator, focused on providing information about the functioning in real flight of all the subsystems and all the components we have been designing in the past years for to, for, to be transferred, to be directly transferred uh, to Mura 5, to the big launcher. In addition to that, since we are going to be launch this vehicle into space and we are going to offer uh, a vehicle capacity for payloads, we are going to fly inside experiments, scientific experiments from biology point of view, chemical point of view, physics uh, point of view, to be introduced up to 100 kilograms inside of the uh, launch vehicle and then launch it into space. So uh, the experiments can be there about between four to five minutes and then go back to Earth and recover the rocket. This is one of the advantages. We're going to try to recover the, the launch vehicles each time we launch and then reduce it. So reducing the cost of access to space and increasing the potential uh, offer of uh, these uh, launches into space. Here you can see a general view of how the launch vehicle will fly. So we go up, up into space. We stay up there a few a few minutes and then we, we back uh, to Earth and we recover the booster 
in the Atlantic uh, Ocean. Formula Pike uh, is actually the same, but it's a larger development. You see here the picture compared with a, with a, a human for scale. So we are proposing launching up to 15 missions per year, especially dedicated to small satellites from one Q, one U CubeSat, one kilogram, let's say, until even more, more than uh, 500 kilogram satellites. So the size of a washing machine that you may have in your, in your house. This uh, type of satellites can be used for earth observation or for telecommunications. And actually this could be one of the very first uh, European based developments for dedicated launch services to small uh, satellites. Um, one of our uh, key aspects as you introduced were also the reusability. So we have two contracts with European Space Agency uh, for uh, actively recover the booster, the first stage of the launch vehicle that supposes more or less than the 70% of the launch vehicle, try to recover from the ocean and then put it again on the launch pad and launch it. So that can help to reduce the cost of access to space, but also to increase the number of launches per year because the launch vehicle is also ready for a new launch. The mission itself is very similar to Mula 1 with respect to the first stage, so go into space and then go back, but we continue flying with the second stage uh, to put the satellite uh, into orbit. After the satellite has been injected into orbit, we perform a maneuver for re-entering the second stage, avoiding the generation of the space debris once uh, we are in, in orbit. This is all going to be applied for all the missions. So since the beginning, PLD space is not contributing to generating space debris derivating from the launch vehicle service. From the technology, technological point of view, our capabilities have been focused since the early days in trying to perform as much as possible in-house because we need to know how the system is works. So to know how the system works, we need to perform as much as possible development in-house. So we have been focused on propulsion, on structures, on operations, on ground segment, everything. Uh, and we have support from, from uh, key Spanish uh, players for developing certain specific components for the launch vehicle. So here you see a big map is the case of uh, some ex some examples. The fairing has been uh, designed by PLD Space and then subcontracted to a to a uh, uh, Europe's uh, company, uh, well known for 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 other launchers. Uh, the avionics bay has been architecturally uh, designed by, by GMB and uh, PLD Space in a collaborative uh, uh, way. Now we are in the process of integrating and, and exploiting the, uh, the components. Uh, the COPB, for example, is a composite of a wrapped uh, pressure vessel and contains the helium that is required to uh, actively uh, move the propellers inside of the launch vehicles. This is one of the first developments in Europe for this special component. Uh, and it's the very first time in Europe that a private company uh, with not external support has developed uh, this component. Uh, just as a reference, can hold uh, 450 bars of helium and 2060 liters. So it's a, a huge component, high pressure one, and it's the one providing the force for moving propellants into, uh, into the, the engine for Mura 1 and for Mura 5 for, for pressing the stage before entering into the turbo pumps. Uh, with respect to Teprel uh, engine, Teprel was the contract uh, CDTI granted us in the early days, so we are very proud of having uh, CDTI with us since the uh, since 2012. Uh, TEPRAL is the acronym for the Space Technology Liquid Propulsion Space Technology for Launchers, and we are working with CDTI since the early days for this specific uh, propulsion system that is the heart of uh, any launch vehicle in, in the in the world. And finally, the launch pad. We have been focused also on performing uh, ground operations and ground infrastructure to support launches in Spain and also in French Guiana. And we hold the entire development of all the subsystems and all the components at launch pad level to manage uh, the launches for Mura 1 as well as for uh, Mura 5. So this is my presentation. Thank you very much for, for your attention and it has been a pleasure to be here with us. Thank you very much, Mr. Torres. And this is all of today's CDTI webinar. We thank you all for joining us today. We hope that you got some idea of the Spanish challenges in space field. We also expect you to have found some seeds of collaboration with the Spanish space sector. You will find all presentation materials shown in today's uh, seminar in the website of this 
webinar where you find your legislation. Thank you again, and please stay safe and well. Thank you very much. <laughs>